Coming up on Illumination News, if you haven't heard already, all of High Rise is running around Lipscomb this morning after being kicked out of their warm beds at 2 a.m. by the fire department. Stay tuned for more. Also, it was a concert-filled week. Musical stars of all sorts also flooded our campus. If you missed any of the excitement, don't worry. We've got you covered. Your Illumination News starts now. At Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, from the Department of Communication and Journalism. Recorded live from the Mulliken Studios in Ezell. A program produced for students by students. This is Lumination News. Welcome to Lumination News, your weekly take on events happening in and around Lipscomb campus. I'm Jessica Burke. And I'm Wade Funderburg. Early Thursday morning, the gentlemen of High Rise were awakened by the sounds of firemen beating on their doors. No, the dorm was not being engulfed by flames, but just the opposite, actually. Here's Hunter Patterson with more. At around 1.30 a.m. on Thursday, the High Rise dormitory on Lipscomb's campus was evacuated after a pipe had burst on the first floor. As of 7.47 a.m., High Rise had reopened to all residents. Just I'm um, roommate woke up at 3 and saying there's a fire truck outside. And so, I don't know, the first thought was the place on fire, so we went downstairs to check it out, and it ended up being the exact opposite. It was a pipe bus, and they were kicking us all out. The water was 10 feet deep in the high rise boiler room at its highest point. At one point in the morning, it was unclear if the high rise dorm would even open on Thursday. And there, there's parts that they may not be able to access today. And so there, this could be another 24 hours before we have access to the building. The administration made a decision to cancel all classes that began before 5 p.m. Uh, at the time, I was pretty angry. I was in a good sleep, but they canceled classes, so I think it all kind of makes up for it. President Lowry says that he was very proud of the way that Lipscomb students handled this strange set of circumstances. Here's a case where a water main broke, and I'm just so pleased with how our campus has responded to it. Students have been great. Sorry to mess up their night. I mean, the time I was um, sad that I wasn't being able to sleep, but um, at great cost to Lipscomb University, it was a lot of fun yeah. staying up all night long and hanging out in the student center with hundreds of other people and just walking around campus all morning long, watching the media go around and make a big deal out of it. Provided a pipe does not burst in Elam tomorrow morning, classes are on for Friday. This has been Hunter Patterson for Illumination News. Currently, there is no word on when the pipe will be completely repaired. Luckily, though, there have been no reports of damage to student property. On March 6th, the other Ribbon Veterans concert was held in Allen Arena. Many different storms came out for the event leading up to one amazing night. Let's go to Anne with more. Charlie Daniels' Scholarship for Heroes Tour was held on March 6th in Allen Arena. The concert was a salute to military personnel and featured many different artists alongside Charlie Daniels, including Gary Lieutenant Dan Sinise, Chris Young, The Grascals, Daryl Worley, and special guest The Rascal Flats. There's not a better place in the world for them to come and be surrounded by a community that loves them, that has values that are so consistent with their healing uh, and can prepare them for the rest of their lives. Well, this is an exciting event. Uh, it happens every year at Lipscomb. Oh, it, it's my pl pleasure to be here and uh, to support Charlie and his wonderful program. It's doing such good things here at Lipscomb for uh, veterans. Uh, as Charlie said, we can never do enough, but we can always try to do a little bit more, and they're, they're, they're doing that here. So it's a great program, and I'm honored to be able to come and support it. To be involved in anything with the troops and trying to get back just a little bit on their dedication to what they do for us is, is a huge thing, you know, and Lipscomb University to honor this. When they come back home, we raise money to let the soldiers who have been fighting for, for us go to school and get an education for free. It's a huge thing. And I'm going to play Devil Went Down in Georgia tonight. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, it is. <laughs> At the end of the night, the veterans were honored in front of a crowd while David Lipscomb Choir sang hymns. We have patriots here tonight. We have patriot families that are here tonight who have paid dearly 
for the freedom that we've got to stand in this room and say any man we please. That's the United States of America. It's here because of people like the ones that we're honoring tonight. Thank you. This is Ann Paquin with Lumination News. On behalf of Lumination News, we would like to thank all of America's soldiers, past and present, for their commitment to serve. If you'd like to learn more about the Yellow Ribbon Program here at Lipscomb, please visit lipscomb.edu slash yellow ribbon. Friday, March 2nd, was SGA's yearly concert. This year, students were able to take in an intimate acoustic show featuring Matt Carney. Lumination! <laughs> Illumination. On March 2nd, SGA put on their annual free concert for Lipscomb students. This year, the guest singer was Matt Carney, a well-known Christian musician. Kiernan McMullen opened the show for Matt and won over many of the students that filled the packed alumni auditorium. I think it's a, you know, my faith is a huge part of what I do just because um, being a Christian is, uh, you know, if you allow it to really be what it is, it, it seeps into all of your life and I think from writing about falling in love with my wife to dumb pop songs, I love writing about depravity and difficult times but also really holding on to this idea that um, there's a bigger story being told and uh, in the middle of all that and I, I think that's kind of one of my main missions when I write is to try to explore that tension between what's difficult and um, a beautiful loving God in the midst of that. I was excited to have Matt Carney. He seems to be a very sweet little man. And um, I think my favorite part was just when he was talking to us because we got to hear a little bit about his life and his wife. It was awesome. The student crowd was great. A lot of energy. Um, favorite part tonight was probably the last song because I think it was really special to him. It was most touching. And I, I think that was great for him to come out and share that with us. Tonight was the SGA Spring Concert, and we heard some really great music from our opener, Kiernan McMullen. And we also listened to uh, one of the favorite bands of our students, and that's Matt Kearney. Um, both are from Nashville, and I think both really speak to the amazing community that we live in. This is Ann Paquin with Illumination News. Matt Kearney has a tour on the West Coast beginning in Anaheim, California this April. For photos from the show, visit LuminationNetwork.com. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Harding freshman Ty Osman. Ty was involved in a fatal accident on Interstate 30 in Texas while he was helping another motorist. A third vehicle hit Osman's Dodge pickup, which then hit him. A day after the accident, he passed away on Sunday, March 4th. He was a recent graduate of Brentwood High School and a friend to many in the Lipscomb Middle Tennessee community. All who knew him say he was a wonderful friend and lived his life to honor Christ. He'll be greatly missed by many. With spring break right around the corner, Lipscomb students have built a solid reputation for showing God's love all across the world through missions. And baseball season is starting up. The Bisons, but the Bisons are not off to a start they had hoped for. Stay tuned to learn how their, season is going, how their season is going and what to look forward to. Makes as much sense as driving drunk. Hey, Lindsay. I wish you didn't smoke weed. You're not the same when you smoke. And I miss my friend. I'll be outside. Spring break is fast approaching, and while some students may be using this break as a time to relax, several Lipscomb students are using this time to impact communities. Let's see what Lipscomb students had to say about their experiences domestically and abroad. For some students, this is what spring break looks like. 
and this is what spring break looks like for Lipscomb students. Hello, this is Erica Alberto with Lumination News. We are in the missions room where as you can see, there are many possible destinations where you, as a Lipscomb student, can serve. Based in Nashville, Lipscomb is reaching the far corners of the earth, impacting lives. The Lipscomb Missions Program started about 10 years ago um, uh, through the work of our Director of Missional Studies, Earl Lavender, um, and uh, as well as Jeff Fincher, um, Mar our, our current Assistant Director of Missions, Mark Gent, um, has been really involved over the last, uh, over the last 10 years um, putting together the program. And uh, it now has grown to a program where we, we're, send, we're sending teams out to about 24 different uh, countries, dozens of domestic locations. We've got about 700, uh, probably over 700 um, students who are going to be involved with us this year. Uh, I did a mission trip with Lipscomb twice, uh, two years in a row. I went to uh, the City of Children in uh, Baja, Mexico. Um, and I really had a great time. The, the team was great. The organization was great. I still am benefiting from the mission trip that I went on my freshman year. Um, we decided to rebuild a house. We built, rebuilt the floor of the house when we went, and that helped me realize that I'm so lucky to live in a house. Lips Commission trips are such a great experience, and I encourage everyone to go on one at least once or twice when you're here because they teach you a lot about yourself and it's a great opportunity to build community with people outside Lipscomb and people inside uh, Lipscomb. I would recommend people who love serving and just have a love for the Lord just to go on mission trips. This is Erica Alberto with Lumination News. The different mission teams will be impacting lives from March 17th until March 23rd. Whether you're on a mission trip or taking in the sun at the beach, be sure to have fun and stay safe. The Pi Sigma, Tau Phi and Friends group kicked off their Singarama lock-in on Saturday starting at 4.30 p.m. They worked on character building with the cast, perfected dances, worked on sets, and of course, sang their hearts out. The group had fun during the long night, but also got down to business. The practice ended at 3.30 a.m. for the C theme group. The director, Morgan Mathis, said that the show completely turned around after the lock-in. Hours upon hours were put into the production of the Synchrorama for all the groups. Seeing all the hard work of this, this student production will not leave you disappointed. So make sure to come out and see it. Tired of all the same food in the cafeteria? Don't you wish we could have some international chef cook for us? Well, you're in luck. March 5th and 6th, Chef Tom Tomo Ursik came all the way from Slovenia to share his cuisine in the Bison Cafe. Let's dig into the food with more of our, I'm sorry, let's dig into the food with some more of our resident food critic, Nick Lendy. What's going on, Bisons and Bisonettes? Here we are outside of a very crowded Bison Cafe because we have a very special event today. Chef Tomo Irsik comes all the way from Slovenia just to cook for us, and we're going to go check out his food. Let's go. My name is uh, Irsic Tomo. I came from Slovenia for a global chef program. Every year, Selects of America invites some chefs from other countries to cook. Uh, Cuisine from the other countries, you know. I'm here to present Slovenia. We cook Slovenian dish. Today I prepare a lettuce with the Corinthian cottage cheese. I made it with Slovenia with paprika, salt, pepper, chocolate, red onions. I will serve it with prosciutto, melon, red onions, uh, rings, and garlic. With this pumpkin oil, I bring it from Slovenia. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Okay, I have many words for this, but I'm gonna put it in one. Delicious. You need to try it now. It's pretty good. The soup was actually really good. The pork is a little tough, but it's still good. I thought it was very good. I, I, I liked how Sadek says trying to mix it up for us. So it's um, interesting to try new things. I really enjoyed uh, getting to taste new things today with a Slovenian chef. Um, some of the things I liked more than others. Um, 
definitely a wide array of tastes with the pork and the salad. Well, that was absolutely exquisite. I'm glad I got to uh, try that cuisine. My compliments to the chef. I actually had to get a second helping. Uh, for now, this has been Lipscomb News. Nick Lendy, I'm signing off. Mm, that looked scrumptious. We're very glad to have you cook for us, Chef Uzik. From all of us here at Lipscomb News, thank you. In other tragic news, Nashville's popular new restaurant, Burger Up, closed its door Saturday after the suicide of one of its founders, Michael Pontes, co-founder of Burger Up, went into the restaurant at around 4 a.m. on Saturday and vandalized the establishment before committing suicide. Pontes was in the middle of a divorce with Burger Up co-founder Miranda Whitcomb Pontes. The restaurant reopened on Wednesday, but our prayers continue to go out to those close to the Pontes and the community he worked to build through his restaurant. Warm weather is here, and if you want to do something free and fun on campus, why not baseball? Jameson Roper has more details about the Boston season. Jameson Roper here for Illumination News. I'm here at Ken Dugan Field where the team's warming up for another game today under some beautiful weather. The team got off to a little bit of a rough start with a 4-8 and eight start. The Bison are having a rough season so far this year, and the team is on a bit of a down streak with nine straight losses. The most recent ones coming from San Diego with scores of 13-9 and 3-2. Right now, Lipscomb sits at dead last in the Atlantic Sun Conference, although they do have a chance to bounce back since no team has played any conference games yet. The team is moving towards their first conference games of the season on the road against USC Upstate on March 16th. After that, the Bisons will be back at home with a game against Austin P on March 20th here at Ken Dugan Field. With over 30 games left in the season, anything is possible. So come out and support your Bison as they start their first conference homestand against Mercer on March 23rd. This has been James Arroba with Domination News. And now let's go to Clay for his musical perspective on entertainment around Nashville. Hi, I'm Clay Smith here with your entertainment news. Well, it's no secret that Mufford & Sons loves Nashville. They played at TPAC, a secret show at the Station Inn, and even a house party down the road right here on Granny White. But this past week, they played at the granddaddy of them all, the Ryman. And they didn't play once. Nay, they did not even play twice. Mumford & Sons played three sold-out shows on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That should say something about how much they love Nashville and how much Nashvilleians and Lipscomb students love Mumford. If you miss the shows, don't worry. I'm sure they'll be back around soon. Well, it, it might be March, but basketball is not the only event that's filled with madness. Nashville's Dead is hosting the Freakin' Weekend, which kicked off on Wednesday with Titus Andronicus and No Regrets Coyote at the venue The Exit Inn. The shows will be continuing at The End and Exit Inn, which are two different venues, through Saturday. If you're tired of con the country scene and you maybe want to just rock your so get your socks rocked off, this is a great event to check out. Remember that duo that played in Shamblin last year called The Civil Wars? Well, in case you didn't hear, the two, they won two Grammys for Best Country Duo and Best Folk Duo. They just played on Austin City Limits as well. And they're basically booked for the rest of the year playing in Europe. So they pretty much made it to the status of what some people would call a big deal. And to think, they got their start right here at Lipscomb. Well, okay, they didn't technically get their start here. But now you can impress all your non-Lipscomb friends by saying that they played at your university ages ago. And you've loved them since they were way underground you will be guaranteed to achieve a new level of indie glory among your peers. Anyways, congrats to the Civil War. We wish them much, much prosperity and success. And why did the Civil Wars choose Nashville to get their start? Well, for no other reason than the rich songwriting community here. I sincerely hope you've been able to tap into this hidden spring of musical glory. If not, you're missing out, but I'm here to give you the remedy. Open mics happen all over Nashville literally every night of the week. And yeah, you're going to hear some traditional country type songs, but you'll also hear a wide variety of other content. In fact, one of the most famous songwriting havens in Nashville is the Bluebird Cafe right down the road here in Green Hills. Their open mic starts at 6 on Monday nights, but show up early to get a good seat. And I know what you're saying in your head. Clay, I have a medieval history class on Monday nights. I can never experience Nashville songwriting. Well, don't worry. Open mics happen every night, and most of them are free. I mean, free local music. What more could a college student ask for? You can check out openmicnashville.com for a full listing of open mics all around the city. Well, that's all the time we've got for entertainment. Make sure to keep your ear to the ground and your fingers on the computer mouse. There's a lot of great music happening out there around us. After the break, Hunter, Hunter Patterson has weather. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. 
The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. They said if I did coke, I could party all night. They said if I did coke, I could party all night. They lied. Find out the truth about cocaine. Drugfreeworld.org. I was just driving around, minding my own business. When it came out of nowhere, suddenly there were lights all around me. I'm like, they're coming for me. Yeah, it was crazy. I just never thought they would find me. I'm not out here. It doesn't matter where you drive. If you don't buckle up, you will get caught. Cops are cracking down all across the country. Click it or ticket. it. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Hunter Patterson here with your weather, and I'm, gonna, I'm the guy who's going to tell you how it is. But first, let me tell you how it was. If, you're, if you think about it, it's been raining, well, forever. I mean, all day Thursday, it rained. You had this low pressure front, this cold front pushing through the city, and everything from Nashville northward just, it just rained all day, it seemed like. And now if we go to the next map, you'll, we'll see, get a little zoomed in here. This is from Thursday afternoon when um, crews were working to try to fix the water pipe. They say it didn't affect them, but the ground was really soft out there anyways, and this couldn't have helped. There's no telling how far down they dug, and they didn't really mean to. Um, but like I said, this cold front pushed right through. It's going to bring in a little bit cooler temperatures than what we had for the beginning of the week. And when this moves out, there's a little bit more coming. So let's go to this next map right here. And this is that national radar, and there's nothing over here on the west, nothing at all. But down here in the southeast and up all the way up to the um, northeastern part of the country, we have a lot of precipitation, and that's what uh, this side is dealing with right now. No flooding reported in our area, but the streets are wet out there, so be careful. Okay, let's go. Let's switch over and look at some uh, temperatures here. We got Nashville 58, Bowling Green 58 as well. We got 70 down in Chattanooga. Pray for the people down in Chattanooga. Last last week, uh, like most across the mid-state. Chattanooga, as, as well as Nashville and some other cities in the state, were affected by those strong storms and tornadoes last weekend. Uh, pray for those guys. 71 down in Huntsville, 45 in Paducah. And uh, let's go uh, and look at, take a look and see what our weekend's going to look like. This is Sunday, and like I said, we're going to see some more rain come in. Uh, it's going to be moving in from the uh, southwest, and it's going to actually come up just the same as this other system did and shoot up the uh, Mississippi River and come on over into Nashville. Expect a couple inches of rain. But other than that, the, next, the week ahead looks a little bit better. Let's go to our seven day. And um, we have uh, 68 on Friday with a 20% chance of rain in the morning still lingering. And we also have uh, 66 on Saturday. 62, I already told you about that rain, 60% chance on Sunday. Moving into next week, a little leftover showers on Monday morning. And then on Tuesday, we have 71. And uh, Wednesday starts to more, look a little bit more like spring with 73. Now, that's your weather. And uh, next up, we have Connor Prady talking to Justin J. Glenn, and um, we'll see you next week. Well, he'll be graduating this summer with a bachelor's degree in accounting and a master's degree in accountancy. Oh, and he's the Lipscomb, he was the Lipscomb basketball men's center. 
I'm Connor Prady, and I'm with Justin Glenn. Justin, thank you for being here. Connor, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Now, I know <coughs> when you started the season, you didn't expect to lose four players. What, no what was that like, uh, finishing the season with four players? Gone. No, I mean, you can, you can go all the way back to last year and look. We lost, we lost four players to transfers, and, and some players quit and decided not to come back. So losing those guys and then ultimately losing some of the guys we lost during the season, you know, it was tough for our team, but we tried to we tried to rally around it. We tried to kind of focus on the positives. We had a lot of good freshmen that were coming in and playing. Um, Malcolm Smith, Martin, they played great for us towards the end of the year. So we tried to kind of rally around them and um, put our best foot forward and and kind of just move forward. That was our motto for the year. So we had to move forward no matter what happened. Well, moving forward mm -hmm. with the interview. Okay. Now I know you you were an all academic. A son, student athlete. Yeah. How? What was the balance like between being a, a Division One athlete, but yet having to balance your scholastics at the same time? Definitely, definitely. It was tough, you know. Being a, being a student athlete is a full time job, and a lot of people don't realize that. So there was a lot of times we had to study on the road, study when we're on a six hour bus ride, or or take a test right when you fly off a plane. Um, so it was really ultimately it was a full time job, and and you had to kind of treat it that way. Now, you know what another full-time job was, was guarding Adnan Hasek when he was here. <laughs> now, what, when you got here... He was good, wasn't he? He was. He was good. When you got here, you didn't expect to be behind someone of that <clears throat> stature. What was that like, dealing with that adversity and knowing that mm -hmm. maybe not that year was your year to shine, but this year was? Yeah, you know, I came in here with the full expectations that I was going to play and play a lot. So, getting here and then I was going against Otto and I was like, oh, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's pretty good. So, and obviously he was because he had some breakout years and now he's playing professional basketball over in Germany. So it was tough and uh, I had the chance this year to kind of step out and really play my game and, and I'm, I tried to make the most of those situations. Well, I definitely think you did and you were leading, you led the team in rebounding this mm -hmm. season. What was that like? What, what was that like finishing your career as the season leader in rebounds? Just trying to be an animal out there. Yeah. Just trying to go after everything. Okay. You know how it is. No, absolutely. Now, what, for the for the people viewing, what was the greatest memory you had being a Lipscomb Bison? I'd have to say it was this year. You know, playing against Belmont, um, at Belmont, we were the underdogs. I, I don't think there was a person in that gym besides the 10 or, 10 or 15 players we had on that court um, that thought we could win. So... Being able to go there and, and win and kind of make a statement, you know, that we're still here and we're, uh, we're ready. And that was, it was a big for us, and it was probably my favorite memory of, of being here at Lipscomb. Well, I, I think that was one of my favorite memories as a, as a fan because yeah. you played great and, you know, Berg played good. The whole team played I good. I appreciate that. So, so what's <laughs> next on the schedule for you is you're going to be an accountant at Deloitte. Deloitte, yep. Is that correct? Start that in August. And... Um, I'll be living in Nashville, then the real world starts. Wow. So, Well, Justin, I thank you for being here. And uh, we, we just want to wish you the best of luck in your, in your future. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Glenn from the Lipscomb University men's basketball Thanks team. Thanks for having me, Connor. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Appreciate thank it. You. Now let's send it back to the studio for more Illumination News. He's a little bit of you, he's a little bit of me, he's a trash on the roadside of Tennessee. He's the garbage that we find, he's a dream we left behind. Oh, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. A throwaway bottle or a pop top can may not seem much to a traveling man, but a little bit of litter goes a long, long way. Growing and a growing, getting bigger every day. Tennessee trash messing up the highways. Tennessee trash junking up the byways. There ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. No, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. A trash free Tennessee. Sounds good to me. A public service by this station and the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Lady Bison softball goes to Disney World while Bison baseball hits a bit of a slump. 
All this and a little basketball coming your way with this week's sports after the break. Hi, I'm Sydney. That's what I mean by proper. Yeah. What are we? What are we doing though? Hello, sir. We're checking today to make. Lady Bison's softball goes to Disney World while Bison baseball hits a bit of a slump. All this and a little basketball coming your way with this week's sports after the break. Hello, sir. We're checking today to make sure everyone in the car is buckled up. In Tennessee, everyone must use a safety belt. It's the law. You break the law, you'll get a ticket. We're also out to help protect everyone from impaired drivers by checking for drivers who've been drinking. Hello, oh, sir, have you been drinking tonight? Come on, I've only had like two or three beers. Sir, if I determine that you've been drinking and driving, you will be arrested and you will go to jail. If you don't buckle up or if you drink and drive, make no mistake, you will get caught. Hi, I'm Sydney Poe. Let's just skip the small talk and jump right into this week's sports. The Lady Bison went 2-3 during the Citrus Classic at ESPN's Wide World of Sports in Disney World, losing to South Alabama, Penn State, and Ball State before ending the tournament with an 8-2 win over St. John's. On March 7th, the Lady Bison defeated IPFW in a doubleheader behind shutouts from Whitney Kynel and Ashley Anderson. And if you're looking for something to do in the spring weather this weekend, head over to Draper Diamond for the Lady Bison's Classic. The Bison baseball team is in a bit of a slump after losing their ninth game in a row, this time against San Diego. The Bison were able to get an early lead, scoring two in the first inning, but it wasn't enough as a solo home run sailed over left field, giving the San Diego the 3-2 victory. The Bison will be in action again on Saturday at 12 against Siena. Also in action this weekend is the men's tennis team. They'll host North Alabama at 2 p.m. on Sunday, March 11th at the Houston Marsh Griffith Tennis Center where they look to improve on their 4-5 and five record. If you're looking for a little basketball now that the Bison are finished for the year, the SEC tournament is heating up this weekend in New Orleans. While some teams look to knock off top-ranked Kentucky for the first time in conference season, others are trying to win a few games to make the big dance. Specifically, Tennessee, who started the season a little shaky with some ugly losses. They began their season turnaround with a win at home against then number 7-ranked Florida before ending the season on an 8-1 winning streak. While they may be playing well now, they'll need one or two wins in the tournament to convince the committee that they're big dance contenders. That was your two-minute look at this week's sports. Now let's send it back to Wade and Jessica at the desk. Thank you for the update, Sydney. It's now time for your tweets of the week. First up, while some of us may hide the fact that we listen to Avril Lavigne and Aaron Carter on road trips, Aaron Perrier wears his musical tastes on his sleeve. He tweets, confession. When Taylor Swift comes on the radio in my car, the volume increases by at least two notches. Hashtag travel music. And of course, how could we not include a tweet about high rise? Hannah Wilson was woken up this morning, but not by the fire department. She tweets, Papa called me saying he saw the news report about LU water pipe problem. He was all ready with his canoe to fish us out of the flood. And there you have it, our tweets of the week. That's all we have for you today, so thank you for joining us. My name is Jessica Burke. And I'm Wade Funderburg. And thanks for watching.